Hello students, in this video we'll discuss orthogonality relationships for Fourier series, both Fourier complex Fourier series and Fourier sine and cosine series. So let's consider all functions which are 2 pi periodic. On an inner product space, defined by inner product f and g is going to be the integral from negative pi to pi of f of x g of x complex conjugate dx over 2 pi. So I normalize it. So I can use different weights over here, but I'm just going to look at dx over 2 pi. Now, if I consider all functions which are in L2, L2 functions with respect to the Lebesgue measure, then this becomes a complete inner product space. Okay? All right, so what I want to do now is like we've seen in a previous video that we know that if we consider this exponential family, so if I look at the family of functions e to the i and x for n and z, then these functions are orthogonal with respect to this inner product. So in other words, then trivially we can see then it follows that if I look at e to the i n x, e to the i m x, what I get is I get delta n m, which is 1 or 0. It's 1 if n is equal to m, and it's 0 if n is not equal to m. Okay? What I'd like to do now is I'd like to see, so that's one example of an orthogonal family, or the ortho orthonormal family. So this is an orthonormal family, orthonormal family. Okay. I want to derive the same sort of orthogonality relationships for sine and cosine. I can use these functions, these trigonometric functions, to do it, but let's do back first principles also. So what we're going to do is the following. We're going to consider, so we're going to use these product of some formulas. So recall that the cosine of alpha, the cosine of beta, is one half of the cosine of alpha minus beta plus the cosine of alpha plus beta. That's one of the product of some formulas. I can have that the sine of alpha, the sine of beta, is what I get when I subtract these things off, because those are both terms from the cosine addition formulas, cosine of alpha, beta, and then minus cosine of alpha plus beta. And then, finally, we'll get the, the mixed terms over here, the sine of alpha, the sine of beta, or the sine of alpha, the cosine of beta. How we get that one? That's going to come from the sine terms over here, the sine of beta, the cosine of beta, is one half the sine of alpha plus beta. That term will give me, and that's the first term over here, then I have to add that to the sine of alpha minus beta, because that will subtract off the mixed terms over there. So these are the product to sum formulas. So these are the product to sum formulas. And so let's use these products, some formulas to derive the orthogonality relationships of sine and cosine on this interval over here with respect to this inner product over here. So let's do the first one over here. So the first one we're going to consider is going to be, there's one, there's one sort of outlier over here. The outlier over here occurs that when m and n, so in other words, I'm going to consider these integrals over here, integral from 0 to 2 pi, that's my weight, negative pi to pi, of cosine of nx, cosine of mx dx. Well, when m and n are both equal to zero, what's going to happen? This is going to be a one, this is going to be a one, so this is going to be one. So what will happen is that when m is equal to m and n are zero, this is going to be a one. When m is equal to n is equal to zero, that's sort of trivial. Now, when m and n are equal and bigger than or equal to one, m and n are equal to each other and bigger than or equal to one, what's going to happen over here? Well, let's look over here. When m and n are equal to each other, I'm going to use this formula, and this first term over here, when m and n are equal to each other, is going to be the cosine of 0, which is going to be 1. So the first term in this sum over here, when m and n are equal to 1, is going to be h day 1 half. And the second term is going to be a cosine of what? It's going to be a cosine of n plus m. An antiderivative of cosine is sine, and sine evaluated at any integer multiple of pi and negative pi is going to be the same number. So when n and m are equal to each other, I'm just going to have this 1 half term. So it's going to be 1 half times 2 pi over 2 pi. So this is going to be a 1 half over here, OK? And that just follows from the fact that if I integrate from negative pi to pi, the sine of just an integer, any integer I want, mx, 
if I do a sine of this thing of mx or a cosine of mx, those both give me zero, okay? So in other words, both those integrals over there give me zero because they're just periodic functions, okay? Great. And finally, when m is not equal to n, then both these are non-zero, so this is going to give me a zero over here, okay? That's when m is not equal to n. Great. All right, same thing happens with sine, except now with sine, when there was zero, you get nothing over here. So if I do one over two pi, by a similar line of reasoning, if I have sine of nx, sine of mx dx, what's going to happen? What's going to happen over here is that when m and n are equal to zero, I get nothing, so I'm going to group that in that case over here, so I'm only going to deal with the bigger than equal to one case. By similar reasoning, when n and m are equal to each other, this term over here is going to give me a what? That term over there is going to give me a one. And then over here, this term over here is going to be a cosine, but when I integrate cosine, it's going to turn into a sine. Sine is two pi periodic, so that's going to give me a zero. So by the two pi, and these things stem from the two pi, these results stem from two pi periodicity. So they're two pi periodic functions. Great. So we're going to have a one half if m and n are equal and bigger than or equal to one, and we'll have a zero if m is not equal to n. Great. All right. And so now let's do the last one. The last one's going to be when you have a mixed term over here. So when you have a mixed term, one over two pi, the integral from negative pi to pi of what? Of the sine of nx the cosine of mx dx, no matter what m and n are, no matter what m and n are, I'm going to use this relationship, I'm going to get a sine and a sine, and when these things are going to integrate, when these sines integrate, those sines are going to integrate to cosine terms, right? And then, well, because if, if m, say for example, m happened to be equal to n, if m and n were equal, the sine of the zero is going to be zero. Unlike these cosine terms, which give you a one, when you, m and n are equal, the sine's going to give you a zero, and you're still going to get a cosine term, right? So no matter what m and n are, this is going to be zero, because this, this expression is going to integrate to a cosine of m plus n, and a cosine of m minus n, and both those terms are two pi periodic, so the terms are going to cancel out when you perform the integration. So we get these orthogonality relationships by the product of some formulas and using the two pi periodicity. Great. And so now with that me to do is now I can write a formal Taylor series down. So formally, so now formally, what can we say? Formally, formally I can write one of two things. I can write any two pi periodic function f of x is the sum of n and z, f hat of n, e to the i n x, where what are these f hat of n's? We're here f hat of n. It's just 1 over 2 pi, the integral from negative pi to pi of f of x e to the minus i n x dx. Analogously, I can write down a real version of this using these orthogonal relations between sine and cosine. Alternatively, what we can write is this. We can say that f of x is, now here's where this 1 comes in handy. I'm going to put an a0 over 2 a0 over 2, because when m and n are 0, I have this extra factor of a half. Plus the sum, k goes from 1 to infinity of ak cosine of kx plus bk sine of kx. And now by the same reasoning, what can I say about these ak? So these ak are going to be, now I have this 1 half to deal with, so I get an extra cancellation that happens. I get a 1 over pi, the integral from negative pi to pi of f of x cosine of kx. And these bk are what? And the bk are 1 over pi, the integral from negative pi to pi of f of x sine of kx dx. So I get these FOIA coefficients because now the one half is going to be this, the cancellation over here. Now we can form, uh, formulate a relationship over here because what can we say about f1 plus uh, you know f f1 hat plus f negative one hat? That's the coefficient of e to the i and x and e to the negative i and x. So that's going to relate to the a's and the b's. So I can relate all these f hats to these a k and b k by computing the real and imaginary parts of the terms in this series. Thank you very much.